know. Okay, we're yeah. recording. Nice. Okay, like one minute, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to our topic seven review session. I am Olivia or Liv. This is Jen. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this week we did the first part of the cell cycle. Um, we're just going to be reviewing like a little bit of all of the different phases in the cell cycle really quick to start. Um, so G1 is the beginning of the cell of the entry point to the cell cycle. In this phase, cells are checking for DNA damage. They're checking that they're the right size, that they have the energy and the nutrients to undergo, undergo cell division. Um, if they have everything that they need, they will commit to the cell cycle in G1. And after they do commit, either they go through the entire cycle or they have to die. Um, so it's very important that they have all of the requirements to go through the cell cycle and that they check for that at the beginning. Um, in order for, sorry, I forgot to say this bullet point, but um, they need a growth signal for this to happen. And this is usually most commonly the RTK RAS MAPK pathway that we talked about in topic five. So to get into the next phase of the cell cycle, the S phase, also known as synthesis, where DNA synthesis takes place. Um, so the actual definition is when cells replicate their DNA. Um, the S phase checkpoint, which isn't discussed in te textbooks, is when cells can temporarily halt DNA replication if an error is detected. So that's a super important mechanism to keep cells from um, replicating their DNA if there's an issue to avoid um, is worse issues further downstream. Um, and then after the issue is resolved, they can resume DNA replication or perform programmed cell death if the issue is too extreme to be repaired. Um, and DNA replication slash repair will be discussed further in weeks 11 and 12. And then we have G2, which is another growth phase for the cell. Um, the cell also checks that the DNA is done replicated and it also checks for DNA damage. Um, it doesn't want to divide if there is damage to the, D to the DNA. Um, they also continue to grow in this phase. And the G2 checkpoint is going to prevent the cells from going into M phase too soon. So it's going to prevent early um, division of the cell. Um, and it's just to make sure that they have the correct size and that their DNA is undamaged and ready to divide. It's just another growth phase, basically. All right, so going into the M phase, which is when the cell divides up its chromosomes. So spindle assembly and chromosome segregation occur during this phase. We have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis, um, which we will go further into depth in the coming weeks. Um, but spindle assembly checkpoint, also called metaphase checkpoint, basically makes sure that all of the spindles are connected where they should be on the chromosome so that um, incorrect segregation doesn't occur, which would be really detrimental to the cell. Um, so this checkpoint prevents the cell from entering anaphase until the chromosomes have proper, proper microtubule attachments. And then this is just a summary of all of the phases that we just talked about. Um, it's just a quick summary. G1, you're growing, it's your gap phase. Um, there's also G0, which is a non-dividing state. Um, this usually happens when a cell just went through the cell cycle and they're either waiting for a growth factor or they're never going to divide again. Um, that's when a cell is in G0. And then S phase, DNA replication is occurring. G2, checking to make sure that the DNA is all set and that they grow a little bit more before they undergo M phase, which is just the segregation of the chromosomes. 
All right, so now getting a little bit of the nitty gritty of the cell cycle control system, so checkpoints, things like that. Um, so the main idea here is the cell cycle control system is regulated by cycle activating and deactivating proteins and protein complexes. So for those cycles, think about um, the different cyclin molecules being um, transcribed and then degraded during the different stages of the cell cycle to activate CDK. Um, so all of the parts of the cell cycle are regulated, um, DNA replication, chromosome segregation, and cytokinesis. Um, this is done by kinases, thanks CDK. Um, phosphorylation, adding a phosphate group. Um, adding phosphorylation can activate or deactivate a uh, protein. Um, common misconception that adding a phosphate group just activates a pro protein, not necessarily, it can go either way. Um, and phosphatases take off that phosphate, um, which can also go either way. Um, and key point is phosphorylating. Oh, I just said that. Okay. Um, so the main kinase in cell cycle control is cyclin dependent kinase or CDK, which Dr. Francis refers to as the CEO of the cell cycle. That helps you remember it. So like Liv just said, CDK is, <laughs> um, CDK is the master regulator of the cell cycle. Um, they are serine training kinases and they are regulated by a variety of different methods. Um, they could be regulated by the levels of cyclin in the cell and they are also regulated through phosphorylation. So CAC is gonna activate CDK and then you have we one which phosphorylates but it deactivates CDK. So like Liv said, phosphorylation does not always mean activation. Um, we one is an example of when it could mean deactivation. And then CDK can also be regulated by CDK inhibitors and dephosphorylation, so phosphatases that, for example, would take off like we one and then activate CDK. Um, to activate CDK, two events will happen. It'll have to bind cyclin and it will have to be phosphorylated by an activating kinase, which is CAC. Um, if CDK, for example, is bound to cyclin, but we want is still on there, it doesn't mean it's active. So when CDK and cyclin are bound, that doesn't always mean that it's active. Um, yeah, anytime you reach a checkpoint, that's kind of like a break to the cell cycle um, and it could inhibit or deactivate CDK. So moving into cyclin and how different cyclin levels affect the cell cycle. Um, they're required for CDK kinase activity. Um, so they activate CDK kinase activity by binding, but just remember that there also has to be further phosphorylation by CAC in order for the CDK to actually be active. Um, and it tells CDK what to phosphorylate. So think about cyclin D is produced during G1 um, to initiate G1 activities. So it kind of by specific cyclins binding to CDK, it helps the binding specificity of CDK to activate or deactivate specific proteins throughout the cell cycle in order to make sure that the appropriate um, proteins are carrying out the function according to the specific part of the cell cycle that it's in. Um, so cyclin is regulated through transcriptions transla and translation at specific points when they're needed um, which varies depending on synthesis, um, G1, G2, and M phase. Um, and they are degraded through ubiquitin mediated proteolysis. Um, and in order to make CDK activatable by CAC, um, when they bind, they pull back the T loop, which covers that phosphate, the covers the activation site on CDK for CAC to come in and phosphorylate it. Um, yeah, phosphorylation of the T-loop by CAC further stabilizes the conformation that allows um, the active site on CDK to phosphorylate other proteins. Okay. So CDK cyclin complex, um, CDK works with different cyclin partners. Um, I know she talked about this a little bit in her videos. Um, 
they just bind to different partners, which kind of gives them specificity for different proteins. Um, that's really it. Um, yes, the same CDK molecule can function differently and target different proteins in each phase of the cell cycle. And that's possible through different types of cyclin. Um, yeah, cyclin levels will rise and fall um, throughout the cell cycle. Um, this is one of the ways in which cyclin is regulated. It's one of the only ways cyclin is regulated. Um, and a level, like a way to do that is controlling its rates of transcription and translation, its rate of synthesis in the cell, and also its rate of degradation are like tagged with ubiquitin to be destroyed. Um, yeah, and cyclin levels are just controlled based on their concentration in the cell, how available they are at different points of the cell cycle. And I will reiterate that if CDK and cyclin are bound, that doesn't always mean they're active. They need to be, we one can't be there. Great, and more in depth on CDK cyclin complexes. Um, cyclins are phase specific, as we mentioned earlier, um, so that CDK can regulate particular proteins in particular phases of the cell cycle. So one certain type of cyclin will be transcribed during G phase, bind to CDK, and um, make CDK so that it specificity is for proteins that should be functioning during G1, for example. Um, and then there will be then those cyclins will be degraded, and then S phase cyclins will be transcribed um, to do a similar function. Um, CDK activity regulation, they are kinases, um, and they are also regulated through phosphorylation. Um, they must be phosphorylated by CDK activating kinase, or CAC, and they are inactivated by V1 kinase, as we mentioned before. Um, phosphatases, um, dephosphorylate a protein, and CDK inhibitors are typically seen in G1 regulation or in response to DNA damage. So when CDK is active and phosphorylating proteins, generally means that the cell cycle is moving forward. So if, it, if CDK is being inhibited somehow, usually that means either something is wrong or the cell's in G1 and it's not quite ready to divide yet. Um, so it's the master cell regulator, CEO of the cell cycle, um, often the target for molecular breaks for the reasons I just explained. Um, and activation or production of CDK inhibitors also controls the activity of CDK. Um, for example, um, P21 is a inhibitor of CDK. Okay, um, this is just kind of an example um, if your cell finds a DNA mutation in G1, what's going to happen? So P53 would get activated in that scenario. So P53 is a transcription factor. It's a tumor suppressor that responds to DNA damage. So it's going to inhibit the cell from dividing when there is DNA damage. P53 upregulates the transcription of P21, which is then a CDK inhibitor. So Inhibiting CDK is stopping the cell cycle and inhibiting that cell from dividing when it shouldn't be dividing. Um, irreversible DNA damage can also signal, P53 can signal for apoptosis when the DNA damage is irreversible. Um, and then if P53 is unnecessary in a cell, it will be degraded and it'll just be rendered useless. So it'll just be degraded. That makes sense. <clears throat> so now to go more specifically into mechanisms of control, we're gonna talk about um, control in G1. Um, so during G1, cells have to make sure that they're ready to divide. So they, First, they have to receive social signals, such as a growth factor, which initiates that um, process that they're moving towards division, but they're not necessarily reaching the uh, restriction point yet. Um, so before they reach the restriction point, they check for DNA damage, they check for early G1 cyclin, cyclin D, and they check for size, nutrients, and energy, 
and they make sure that the pre-replication complex is formed. Okay. Okay. Did I just skip it? Should, we, should I just yeah, okay. go back? Um, Do you want to go back? You can go back to it up here. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, so formation of the pre RC in early G1. Pre RC is a pre replicate pre-replication complex. It's just a complex of proteins at the origin of replication, so where replication is going to begin. Um, and these pre-RCs are required for DNA replication to happen. And it's going to start when CDK levels are low in G1. So this is going to be before the restriction point. CDK is going to inhibit the formation of the pre-RC throughout the rest of the cell cycle. So it's very important that the pre-RC is formed when CDK levels are low. All right, so more into the formation of the pre-RC, which takes place during early G1. Um, so first we have the recruitment of various proteins. First we have ORC, which is a DNA binding protein, and that binds to the origin of replication. Um, it is an ATPase. And then ORC recruits CDC6, which is also an ATPase, which then further recruits CDT1, MCM27, which is a helicase. And then once MCM complex is loaded, CDT1 disassociates. And that MCM is the helicase that can kind of peel apart the DNA so that it can be read and replicated. Um, so once the pre-RC com is completed, it's called origin licensing. So it's ready to divide to um, sorry, replicate the DNA. And then the next step after origin licensing is finished, um, the pre-IC or pre-initiation complex is formed. This also requires active CDK. This requires CDK. Pre-RC does not require active CDK. It requires low CDK. Um, Pre-IC requires active CDK, and this takes place after the restriction point. Okay, so CDK is full activation in G1. Um, cyclin CDK has, if cyclin CDK has inhibitory and activating phosphatases, it'll still be inactive. Um, when we want our cyclin CDK to be active, we're going to cleave this inhibitory phosphate off in order to get it to work. Our inhibitory phos phosphate is B1 or we one is the inhibitory kinase. Um, that's it. When and this only happens when the cell makes sure that it has the right amount of nutrients and it has to have that growth factor signals and the pre RC should be formed before the full activation of the CDK. Okay, so getting into that restriction checkpoint or point of no return, um, now that the CDKs are activated, they will phosphorylate the protein RB, which when bound to ETUF, a transcription factor, um, deactivates it. So once RB is phosphorylated by CDK, it dissociates from ETUF, and then ETUF is free to, it's active as a transcription factor, and then promotes transcription of proteins for S phase so that the cell can enter S phase and replicate all of its DNA. Um, all right, so then formation of the pre-IC complex um, involves the recruitment of DNA polymerase, um, and then the complex becomes a replosome. Um, this turns into origin firing into S phase so that S phase can take place. Um, and at this point, the cell passes the restriction point, otherwise known as the point of no return. So now the cell either has to complete cell division or it dies. Um, one thing, yeah. Um, one thing I would add, just like the way that like advice maybe is when I think about questions like this, 
Um, and even in the problem set, maybe there were questions that asked like to label each of these proteins as either like a proto-oncogene or a tumor suppressor. I feel like that's helpful just so that you can label what's going on in the cell. Um, and then you can identify what's like if something is mutated, what's going to happen in the cell. Um, so here, E2F is your transcription factor. So it's your proto-oncogene. And then RB is going to be that tumor suppressor. It's kind of like holding back um, something that's going to encourage the cell to divide. Um, that's just something that I think about when I think about these. Yeah. Going off of that too. So for example, if RB loses its function, it can't bind to E2F anymore. That would be a um, overproliferative phenotype because if E2F isn't being um, inhibited, then it can initiate S phase. Yeah. I don't know if that's what this is. Okay. Now, some review questions. We only have two. So. Okay. The first question, is CDK active throughout the entirety of G1 or throughout G1? Or when is it active? Just take like, I don't know, a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For that, make sure the restriction for the slide for the restriction for the slide. Yeah. So I think for the first yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, so it will only be active before the restriction point. Um, like we said, we want CDK for the pre-IC, not the pre-RC. So you're going to want it only after it commits to the cell cycle. Um, and then it's also involved in the RB, E2F, like phosphorylating RB to release E2F. Okay. Okay. Which of the following are examples of ways in which the cell regulates the cell cycle? Pick all that apply. CDK is cyclically phosphorylated and dephosphorylated by other kinases and phosphatases. B. CDK phosphorylates RB, which causes it to bind E2F which leads to transcription of S phase genes. C, pre-RCs form at origins of replication during S phase. And D, CDK phosphorylation of proteins can have both negative and positive effects on replication initiation. Okay, is, does everyone have an idea of what they think? All right, we'll just go with a show of hands. 
Who thinks that A is true? Okay, who thinks that B is true? C and D. All right, so it looks like y'all got it. Correct answers are A and D. Um, so remember for A, um, CDK is phosphorylated by both we one which is inhibitory, um, and by CAC, which is which activates CDK. Um, but this can only happen if we one is not bound to CDK. And it is CDK is dephosphorylated by CDC25, which is a phosphatase. And that removes the phosphate of we one. B is incorrect because when CDK phosphorylates RB, it causes RB to let go of E2F, which then makes E2F active. Um, and C is incorrect because the pre-RCs form during G1, not S phase. And D is correct because CDK is required for DNA replication and prevents re-replication from happening in the same cell cycle by preventing reformation of pre-RCs after DNA replication um, has begun. So that is my feel. And that was it for the first part of the cell cycle. Um, we do more cell cycle next week, um, but we'll stick around for a while. So if you guys have any questions about this topic or the problem set, whatever it is, we'll be here. Thanks, guys. Sure. Of course. Wait, let me just stop recording and then I'll be there. Sorry. Oh, yeah. We just got to stop recording real quick and then be with If you. I figure it out. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> okay, got it. Perfect.